Okay, so this is the third and final project in the Art of Wendell Wicks webinar. And this was for a eco concept design. And I really want to show you the floor plan. So when I click onto this viewport, you'll see it's in low level of detail, but basically it's a top view rendered with OpenGL and in very basic render work settings using shadows. And I've just got a simple Heliodon in there. Um, so if I click classes and scroll down, you'll notice that there's one of my Heliodons, which is my sort of um, physically accurate sky, will be turned on, that one, the front view. So that's cool. It gives you a really nice sort of look as a floor plan. And that's definitely something that I recommend clients understand. A good alternative might be to try perspective, but we just went through orthogonal on that one. Here are the render elevations. Now, this is the real beauty of rendering elevations as opposed to drawing them. Um, not only is it much faster, but you can imagine trying to draw a building like this would actually be really, really fiddly trying to create these kind of things. You know, nothing is quite straight on. Um, it's really hard kind of getting on the window reveals and the kind of accents and so on. And the beauty with this workflow is we can simply update and it will kind of refresh. But what I did want to show you on this one is how I've generated shadows looking good on every elevation. So the way this works is if I click onto the viewport, for example, this south elevation, I'll go to layers and you'll notice that I actually do have a Heliodons layer here. So Heliodons are available from the visualization palette and they're a good way of representing the sun. And in that particular viewport, if I go to classes and scroll down to my Heliodons, you can see I've got the front one on. Okay. If I go to the other view, this would actually be the back view. Um, so when I scroll down to my classes, I've simply disabled the front Heliodon, turned that class off and enabled the back Heliodon. So if I actually kind of double click to my Heliodons layer, you'll notice um, it will kind of go back to the, the design layer and let's just have a quick look at how I've set this up. Let's go to top plan view for a moment. And there is that particular Heliodon. Let's turn the others on. Um, and you'll notice that I've got a little Heliodon rig. And this is something that I often just copy and paste in. So we'll turn them all on. And you'll notice we've got four Heliodons uh, placed rather randomly around the, the project, but it doesn't really matter because all they are is directional lights. Normally that one's actually down there. Um, so they can be placed around the project and basically by turning on the appropriate one, the right, the back, the front and the left, you can get a really nice um, set of lighting. And let's turn the site around the building on. So a really nice thing that you can also do with the Heliodons is basically shadow studies. So here I am in a top rendered view. I've got my Heliodon selected. What's really nice now is I can click onto solar animation and with my Heliodon selected, I can essentially scroll through different times and dates of the year. Um, so this is sort of giving me physically accurate shadow studies. And it basically means that I can show the client exactly what it's like um, on their sun deck at a given time and given date. I can even get inside the building and go into the kitchen, for example. That's quite late in December, so it's a bit dark. Let's go down again. There we go. Um, let's go through the time in sort of middle of the, the summer. And, you know, you can see that's great. Just uh, by orientating the Heliodon north, um, I'm basically able to do little shadow studies. If I want to, I can click export movie. I can actually export sunrise to sunset movies and generate a really nice little kind of 3D shadow study through the day. And they say sometimes it's quite nice to do that inside the design. OK, good. So here you can see... Um, what the design looks like in a bit more detail. Let's kind of spin that around on screen. It's kind of quite a complicated little design, but again, it's still just modeled with three different layers. So what I do find is another really excellent tool for communicating is to do something called save views. So if I go over to my save views panel here, you can see I've got a bunch of different save views already set up. So when I have my client meeting, um, I can essentially double click on a particular save view to recall the settings and the view that I want to show the client. So here's a nice view sort of looking up the drive. I can, let's uh, turn off the, the page boundary just to lose that extra faint outline there. Let's double click onto the next view there. And you'll get like a little animated um, sort of jump between them. And that's quite nice. You can actually vary the length of that animation. There's a little script that I have available, um, which I can actually share with you. 
and you can see it's quite nice you can just double click and you can kind of basically use the save views to tell the story of approaching the design potentially getting into the hallway and then going a bit deeper into maybe the kitchen space and see what it's like in the kitchen look at the dining area so that's really nice quickly access this and then let's whiz outside um, with some pre-made views let's double click onto the rear you can just have a quick look outside the model a bit so using save view is definitely something you want to do not only just to help you actually uh, design the project but also to actually explore the project with the client and sort of pre-prepare like a presentation really um, you can even kind of get right into the space but anytime obviously you can kind of stop and spin around and you know actually show the client something a bit different um, with the fly round tool you'll notice it can be quite sensitive so this is quite a good option to click onto the second mode click on a particular point you would like to anchor um, and then when you fly around it will actually fly around that particular anchor point so that should keep the model centered as I whiz around um, the project so yeah that's a lot nicer yeah looks cool let's get a really really good impression and so you can change the heliodon to get the different times and the dates as well so let's have a quick look at how we can do a very simple object based animation I'm going to go back um, just to my design layer itself um, not the, not with the site actually for this I'm going to put it into top plan and basically one of the nice new features that VET was introduced uh, was to actually be able to animate um, in the new version. So I'm going to go to model, create animation, and there's a bunch of different ones. You see I could actually create a walkthrough based on my save view, so that might be quite a nice thing to do if I had the time. But let's just go for an orbit animation for now. And I can do it um, a full 360, but let's just go 180 degrees for now around the selection. And that should actually generate me a little animation around the selected object. Let's have a look and see if it's big enough. It may not be. Yeah, okay, it may not be quite big enough. Um, so what I'll do is I should have selected probably something a bit larger. Let's just scale it. I'll go to scale and let's scale it three times. That's okay. Good. So now I can basically activate the camera view and have a look at the view through this particular camera here. So that should kind of give me a bit of a view of the project itself. That's cool. Let's turn on the other layers. Let's turn on the first floor and the roof. And we'll just turn on a tiny bit of context around the site, not the whole lot, just the kind of initial context. Good. So now what I can do is click on the play button and really, really straightforwardly, I've got this basic animation path. Um, it'll just kind of calculate for a second and then it will kind of play through. So that's really, really nice, very straightforward. Um, so if I was happy with that, I could slow it down, I could give it a bit more time, um, but basically I could export that as a movie file. Um, so let's create movie file. I won't actually do this right now, but this shouldn't take too long. And you can render this in any of the rendering styles from OpenGL through to sketchy sort of renderings, um, render it styles, that kind of thing, artistic styles as well. And of course the final quality and the custom render works here you can see you've got like really high levels of quality 4k uh, generally do it at uh, 1080p and you know you can also do things like 360 videos as well change the quality you can also process this on the vector cloud so if you are a vector service select member you could actually process it all on the cloud so that it doesn't tie up your computer so here's the result of the final rendered animation I really just wanted to finish off this um, part of the webinar with just one or two more things. And before we do that, I'm just going to kind of skim through the final few drawings that I created on this particular little concept design. And um, you can see I really do love these exploded views. These are sort of what I think of my one of my trademark style of views. And they're very easy to do, as I've shown you before. You just literally draw the design in multiple layers. And then just pull them apart and explode them, maybe put some dotted lines in as well. And you get a really, really nice effect. And the clients really respond to those. Obviously, perspectives um, and isometrics are quite nice. That's actually an isometric view. That's a perspective view. And here we can see a few perspectives as well. 
So I really like doing some storyboards. Um, these are actually the save views that I, I showed you earlier and those save views were just converted into viewports. But it is actually quite nice just to tell, you know, the story of the approach and moving around the building. I did the same with the internal views, didn't quite finish the sheet, uh, but you can kind of get a bit of an impression of the different spaces, even at very early design stage, just get some feedback from the client. So let's see what else. Um, here's a slightly nicer sort of rendered view. And again, this is um, Final Quality Renderworks. You know, looking at that kind of quality rendering, you get the nice soft shadowing and so on as well. So kind of save those for the, the best result. But I was showing on the um, windows and doors, things like the opening lights on some of those. I also really love doing um, some sections. So again, these are the kind of, kind of sections that we can easily create, sort of really nice, crisp, hidden line sections I purposely turned the detail off and set the detail to low, uh, but on this one you can see I've actually shown a little bit about the construction detailing. Uh, it's pretty basic at this stage, but it's in perspective. Um, so if you do want to achieve that, all you need to do is have OpenGL and scroll down and set the view to perspective. And actually under custom you can set the perspective distance as well. Fantastic. So that kind of pretty much rounds off the sheets. These were just some experimental ones I was messing around with, showing that you can actually do perspective uh, clipped sections, which are pretty awesome. And I was using the image effects to get some different effects on those as well. So I hope you kind of like that presentation and get a bit of an impression. Um, so the final thing that I really just wanted to finish off with them um, was how to quickly change your model and do some foot sort of different options on materials, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to pop back to my ground floor layer for this. Okay, so this is the bit I really want to show you how to uh, change quickly. Um, so first of all, I'm going to select this wall type. So let's click onto this wall and we'll force select if needed. That's a good way to select it. Here I can see the wall type. So I'm just going to take a quick look into the wall type here. Um, let's click and edit the style. So what I want to do is basically establish, here is my um, kind of structural zone and here is my, my finish component on the outer, outer section here, 100 mil. I'm going to click edit and you can see that I've got the timber texture here. So what I really want to do here is load in a different texture. So this is really what I wanted to show you. I've got some really nice libraries um, available and I've actually got them open in the background just at the moment. So this is the actual um, sample texture back which I'm going to give away to anybody who contacts me after the webinar. You can see it's got a really nice set of samples and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, this is the one that's actually on my website with 120 textures so quite a bit, bit of variety in there and I just want to kind of swap it out for this very contemporary sort of Nordic black timber cladding also got some really nice uh, weatherboarding there as well just to show you this rather dramatic change so I'm going to click OK click OK and hopefully uh, Vectorworks is going to re-render it's going to replace these walls we're not changing the thickness of the wall so I don't need to really do anything there but I am going to replace the textures I don't need to do the IFC data and let's just see how long that takes shouldn't take too long we'll click OK and hopefully it's just going to take a second to recalculate. Yes, it's doing the geometry rendering now. Fantastic. So here we can see I've got that lovely um, black sort of timber and I actually really like that. It's a pretty cool option. Um, so I just really wanted to show, you to show how straightforward that is in terms of swapping textures out. And really just to finish off with, um, this is the free sample texture pack that I've promised to give anybody who contacts me after the uh, webinar. So just drop me an email if you'd like a copy of that. So you even got some blank space ready for you to add your own as well. And here is a quick preview of the full one, um, which is available on my website. Check out my new website with the lovely, lovely libraries that are available there. And the great thing with these is they all come through with classes. So whenever you copy a cube, they all come through with different material classes. So often what I actually do is I select them. Um, I select a bunch of the ones I need and I copy them. And then when I go back to my project and paste them in, that will bring the classes through as well as the actual textures themselves. So for example, I could quickly paste those textures in, um, kind of just see them around the other side, so sort of spin around here. And then, you know, it's pretty easy for me if I want to, let's eye drop from that 
see what happens if we drop it onto the roof. Not a lot. And that's probably because the roof is taking its texture from, yes, it is, from style. So if I go to edit style, let's just show you how this works. That's, I'm assuming, the texture. Yes, it is. Um, so again, we could do it by class, but let's just click here. That new texture will now be inside the project. There it is. Um, I'm not sure about the color, but let's just swap it out anyway. And let's go for it. Let's click OK. Do what we did with the walls. Let's just replace them. And suddenly we have some green roofs. One really cool thing, though, um, is if you don't quite like the shade of that texture, it's a little bit intense, we can go to the resource manager and we can actually find that texture. So let's search for the RenderWorks texture there. Let's go and right click. Let's edit it. OK, so what this means is with my texture backs, even though there's um, 120 materials, if you're clever, you can apply image effects directly on to this. So this is so cool. So I can kind of tone that down to more of a kind of nice coppery green. Click apply and that will then apply to the texture. Click OK and in turn it will now re-render and you can see I've updated and toned down those textures a little bit. So, you know, even those 120 textures there, um, because you can apply unlimited Im image effects on them, you can actually generate a, a wide variety of different colors as well. Fantastic. So, I really hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Um, I'll be doing a few questions and answers after this sort of formal part of the presentation. But do please visit my website and check out my training courses uh, and definitely check out the new library packs that I've been creating. There's some really lovely libraries there. They're, they're going quite well. And I'll look forward to answering your questions shortly. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.